and welcome back. This is part seven of what looks like it's going to be an eight part series, so we're almost done. Uh, in this part, I'm going to show you how to render your animation. So, in other words, how to make it into a movie file. So, the first thing we need to do is we need to take a look at what this is going to look like um, when it's rendered, just to make sure there are no problems before we actually go ahead with the rendering process. So on the left hand side you can see my 3D view, on the right hand side you can see my camera view. As I left click and drag through my timeline, I'm basically playing through my animation just lo looking at and reviewing my camera animation that I did in the previous video. Okay, so everything looks pretty good. Um, so now to test it, you're going to come over here to the far right hand side and this tall panel here on the bottom right is called the properties window. I'm going to put my mouse pointer right on the edge, left click and drag to the left. That way I can see all of it and I'm looking at these little tabs right up here. Okay, so the first tab that I want to be on is this, uh, is this first one here that looks like an um, old camera and this is called the render tab or render panel. And there's a lot to look at here, but we're going to only look at a few things. So the first thing I want to do is I want to press this first button here called render. And when you do that, it's basically going to render or create uh, the frame that you're currently on. And this is frame one for me. And you can see that I can see the kid and I can see his shadow, but I can't see anything else. Um, so what's up? Well, I think something happened uh, incorrectly when uh, a setting was off. When, um, when we imported um, the kid and the trees and the stairs um, and the different photographs. But we can fix it. So the way we're going to fix it is we're going to come up here to the top right hand corner. And this is called the outliner view. And if your outliner view is small like this one, you can put your mouse pointer on the divider line and when your mouse pointer becomes a double arrow left click hold and drag up and down or forwards and backwards until you can see um, everything so I'm going to come over here and you'll see everything in your scene you'll see your camera you'll see your background image the kid image um, the lamp in the scene although it's not really doing anything uh, the stairs and the trees. So I'm going to select the kid by left clicking and when I select the kid I'm then going to come down here to the properties uh, panel and I'm going to look for a panel that is called the material panel. It looks a little bit like a beach ball. So I'm going to click on the material panel and as I scroll down on the material panel you'll see a little preview window and we'll see our kid here. Don't worry that he's upside down. And you'll notice that he's got sort of a solid, opaque background here. We don't want that. We want it to be completely transparent. So I'm going to scroll down until we find this category here called Transparency. And under Transparency, it should be set to Z Transparency. And when we set it to Z Transparency, let me show you the difference. Just, I'm just closing these other ones here so you can see better. You don't have to close them. So when we go from mask, you'll see it's opaque. When we go to Z transparency, you'll see that we can truly now see through the whole kit. Now if we go back to the camera panel and press render, you'll see that we can now see more. We're now seeing the stairs, and that's because we're seeing through the kit, but we now can't see through the stairs image. So we have to do the same process for all of the images. Okay, so we don't have to do it for the background though because the background has no transparency. So we just need to do it for the kid, the stairs, and the trees. So I'm going to click on stairs, go back to the material panel, and you can see it's opaque. I'm going to choose Z transparency. You can see it looks better. Simple as that. Tree 1, Z transparency. Tree 2, Z transparency. Now, go back to the render panel with the camera, press render, 
and you can see we fully see our entire shot. I don't really need this outliner window much anymore, so I'm going to left click and drag it up. That way I can see more down here. Okay, so this looks pretty good. It looks like my regular old photograph, and this is your first time seeing everything being all reassembled back in Blender. Um, so this is proof that your work in Photoshop, all the cloning and quick masking and the reassembly in Blender has in fact, hopefully, worked for you. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and save. Okay, so now we're ready to render. So you wanna be on the render panel, because we're ready to render, and it's real simple, just go through this nice and slowly. You might want to uh, do this step and then, or watch this step and then pause and then do this step and then pause and just repeat. Okay, so we need to check this area right here that says resolution. And by default, um, it probably says 1920 by 1080. Um, right below that, there's a slider down here that yours might say 50%. Um, if it does, you're going to want to crank it up to 100%. And that way we get um, we get a full movie that's this size, 1920 by 1080, which is, if you've seen on YouTube, and you see video that says 1080p, um, and it's HD quality, that's what this is right here. If you left it at 50%, you would get half of both of those numbers. So we want it nice and full. Okay, over here on the right, you want your start frame to be set to 1, and you want your end frame. In this example, we're setting it to frame 240, um, and that's going to give us a 10-second animation. Obviously, if you think your movie is too, is too quick, you could make it to be 300 frames or 3,000 frames if you really want to. It's just going to take longer to render. Down below that, we see frame rate, and you can see there's quite a few choices here. 24 is great for us. And that's what gets us a 10 second animation. All right, we're going to leave everything else the same. We're going to scroll down. I'm just going to close a couple of these areas here because we don't need them. All right, so now we're going to come down to this area here called output. And output is where you tell Blender uh, three things. Uh, what you want to call your movie, where you want to save it, and what kind of a file is it going to be. And that's output. So right now, uh, it says TMP, which means a uh, temporary folder. And if you render it there, it will render, um, and you might be able to find it, but um, it will be deleted later because it is a temporary folder. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on this little folder icon on the right-hand side, and we're going to then over here on the left-hand side click on Desktop, so we save to the desktop. And then right up here on the top, we're going to then go ahead and give it a name. Um, I'm going to call this uh, Parallax Render Test 1. Okay, and the reason why I put a uh, test in there is because, again, I don't know how well this is going to turn out, so we'll see. Um, if it turns out I have nothing else to do, no fixes or anything, I'm really happy with it, uh, then I'll probably change the name to Final or something like that. Okay, so we've chosen the name, we've chosen the location. Now here's the big one, the format. Right down here you'll see a little pop-up that says PNG or Paint. If you click on that, you'll see two categories. You'll see image formats on the left and you'll see movie formats on the right. If you leave it as Paint or if you change it to any of these other image formats, you will then save every single one of these 240 frames onto your desktop as a file. And what that means in plain English, if you don't understand, is it means that you will very quickly have 240 ping image files on your desktop and it will be like a file explosion on your desktop. And it happens and if it does happen, you basically just have to delete all of them off your desktop and start all over again. Um, there is a way to turn those images into a movie file though, but it's a little bit more advanced. Um, so do this step very carefully. Okay, so I don't want them as images for this example. I want a video. 
So I'm going to come over here to Movie, and I'm going to have you choose the very last option. It should be FFmpeg Video. When you choose FFmpeg Video, then, and this is our last step, we're going to go here to our last category, which is called Encoding. We're going to click to open Encoding, and there's a lot of settings here, but luckily there's some presets. So we're going to click on Presets, and we're going to choose the second one. And it's going to say H.264 in MP4. And a lot of you have probably heard of MP4s because you're used to YouTube and you probably have seen those three, those three uh, letters and numbers, MP4. So that's it. That will save our file as an MP4. So it'll save our video file as parallaxrendertest.mp4. I'm going to go ahead and hit File Save. That way if I have to um, start over again, I don't have to do all that again. All right, so now we're ready to render. So now we're going to come back up here to the top of the render panel. And you'll see we've got render, we've got animation, and audio. Forget about audio for now. We're going to choose animation. And when we do that, it's going to turn one of your windows into a render panel where you can see it rendering every single frame. Um, now it's a little tough to see on my screen, but what you'll notice on your screen are these little uh, colored um, squares as they're kind of moving outward. And what that's doing is Blender is uh, breaking up this image into little tiles, like a mosaic uh, piece of artwork. And that helps Blender um, break down the image into smaller bits and pieces so it can deal with it. Up here at the top, you'll see it says Render, and you'll see a little progress bar for each frame. You could click on this little X here and cancel the render. And then up at the top of the window, you'll see a current frame count. So currently I'm on frame 16 of 240. Um, down here at the bottom of the timeline, you'll also see the little um, play bar that's moving along as well. And if you see your toolbar down here, um, you should, here we go, way over here on the side, you'll see a little progress bar down there as well. So that's it. Um, you just have to sort of sit and wait. So you can't do anything else in Blender because it's rendering right now. Um, but this is where you can go check your email, um, surf the web, um, go get a sandwich, grab a cup of coffee, um, go see all those friends you haven't seen for a while because you've been working in Blender for you know, a couple weeks or months or whatever. Um, and that's pretty much it. I'm going to pause the video. Um, and I'll come back when this is rendered so we can uh, finish up. I'll see you then. Okay, and we're back. Just got a few frames left to render. You can see up here, I'm on frame 237 of 240. Okay, so now it's on the last frame. You can see it hit 100%, and so it's just basically saving it out to the desktop. So if I now minimize this, so I need to go find it. Let's see. Um, Here we go. Sorry about that. Too many, uh, too many screencasts. Okay, so here you can see that what Blender does is it names the video um, what you called it, and then it also puts in the frame count. So right here it says uh, frame one to two forty. You can get rid of that frame count if you want. So just um, click on your file once, and then a second time, and then you can go ahead and just delete that. There we go. Okay, so the big moment of truth. Double click it to open it up. You can see it's a 10 second video because I did 240 frames at 20 frames per second. And if I press play, you can see the parallax effect. If you really look at the stairs and you look at the kid, uh, you can see it happening. So if you want to make any changes, um, you would go back to Blender and make those changes. You would reanimate it. Um, and just kind of enjoy it. Um, if you notice any big problems in Photoshop, you'd want to go back a little further 
um, and then of course you would have to re-render. Um, okay, so that's it. Um, in the next and last tutorial, I will show you how to animate the subjects of your photos. So in this case, we'll animate the kid's arm, maybe his head tilting a little bit, um, and we'll animate his uh, both of his arms, maybe his legs. We'll see what that looks like. Um, and then we'll be done with the series. So I'll see you then.